Dear colleagues, the flow, flow, flood of uh, research information is such big that it is, uh, I could hardly to discern any significant information. However, I have designed my report aiming for reporting something new which can influence our practical activities in the in, in next, in next future, in near future. <coughs> And among all cases of, of breast cancer, has taken a place of so the big place of about up to 60 percent of all cases. In many cases, triple negative. Remember, breast cancer is is observed. So estrogen, progesterone, and HER2 are negative in these cases. Uh, hence, I would like to tell you that breast cancer in Russia, and that is 600,000 cases, including 60,000 women with primary diagnosis. If we shall perform simple arithmetic calculations, that's about 400 persons which have hormone-dependent tumors. Maybe in a half of them will be a metastatic disease. That's a rather big figure. And this will determine our activities for the next years. We don't know too much about don't know much about hormone-dependent tumors. They are mostly favorable. This uh, tumorigenic effect is performed via estrogen receptors. That's treatable by, with hormone therapy. And the disease may be stabilized in, in these cases. So and progesterone receptors are also expressed. Mm, weight, uh, which is characterized with better sensitivity for hormone therapy. And these receptors are often lost in the course of disease. And their absence is associated with the GFR receptor expression and higher activity of signal pathways uh, determining tumor growth. And then metastatic tumors contain gene mutations and therefore, these mutations may be occur as secondary events, thus modifying reactions of uh, estrogen of hormone receptors, and thus favoring uh, occurrence of resistance. And so we'll take about hormone. We'll, we'll speak about hormone resistant breast cancer according to the common classifications uh, except of uh, fastly progressing cases of disease, uh, the so-called visceral crisis, thus uh, making us to undertake more emergent measures. Uh, and in, in those in those cases when this uh, hormone resistance is evident and we apply for more for other treatment methods so uh, the, this tumor is uh, due to and in this slide uh, we see classical genomic mechanisms mm, uh, determining resistance to hormone therapy it is performed by a complex of transcription factors, uh, estrogen receptors, genome stimulation, and then, then making the cell to divide and to metastasize, and bringing about tumor progression. So that is a slower way of progression. However, there are some non-genomic mechanisms uh, which is performed via different growth factors, including HER2, 
and M tour and and M tour and them tour touches they become a popular target for appropriate drugs uh, it is well known that the signal pathways uh, had to mediated signal pathways are, are interconnected and they can interact between one another uh, thus Mm, that's uh, bringing about an idea to, of mm, uh, simultaneous blocking of HER2 and uh, estrogen pathway. You know these pathways. Mm, you know the synergistic effects bring about some clinical actions. Uh, no, 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 the, 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 the terms until progression. Uh, previously, but not too long, but uh, anti hair tooth therapy, they brought about elongation of life in these patients. The optimal combination uh, between hormones and hair two agents is uh, non optimal, but it is plausible in those patients in whom we cannot perform chemotherapy. Next target. Which uh, was studied as a potential target for improvement of hormone therapy that was mTOR target. Activation of this signal pathway is observed in cases of, of some cases of hormone therapy, therefore. Uh, mTOR ta targeted drugs, virulimus, for example. Mm, were started with, uh, for example, with examistan. It is Bolero 2 study, and first results were quite impressive. And it, it, uh, there was an opportunity to, uh, to increase um, time until progression. Uh, but uh, next studies have shown that this combination is not uh, not superior to the to previous uh, regimens. And moreover, limus has a lot of serious adverse effects. It's a new drug that is now it, uh, that is palbatsiklib, which inhibits cyclin-dependent kinases. Now, the activation of cyclin-dependent kinases is typical to a lot of cancers, through diff different cancers, including hormone-dependent cancers and hyperactivation of this protein. It brings about a uh, loss of proliferative control, which characterizes different types of cancer of malignancies. And palbociclib is blocking GS, GG12S to cell cycle transition at the stage of preclinic, preclinical stage. It was shown that most effective, uh, most, most mostly effects of palbociclin are pronounced in cell strains, and uh, and a series of studies, Paloma one, for example, and a small study, second phase, which included patients with uh, disseminated hormone-dependent breast cancer. And the patients, uh, they, they uh, two arms, literal palbociclib, two, uh, two arms. And first end points was the uh, relapse free survival. The results which were obtained are generally impressive and impress us till, till, till nowadays. Since the, the relapse free survival we have shown efficiency of palbociclib. Mm, uh, and this slide shows toxicity. Uh, the main adverse effect of palbociclib is uh, how, uh, uh, that is leukopenia and neutropenia the hematological toxicities. The high uh, and neutropenia is grade three four is quite common uh, with this drug. Uh, other types of toxicity. Uh, you see that they were not not so common, hence the treatment was uh, tolerated, well tolerated. And the authors 
uh, based on this data, have concluded that palbociclib plus litrazole has uh, provided uh, gain in survival, and in this combined regime, uh, showed uh, short satisfactory tolerability, and these results were reported. In San Antonio, Texas, uh, winter 2014, and it was so impressive that at the beginning of next year, in February 2015, uh, FDA has performed an accelerated fast registration of this drug due to its high efficiency. And at ASCA conference this year, the results of second study were reported, which started the results of P P Paloma 2. So here they included placebo control. This study was much more extensive in terms of number of patients and, and the disseminated breast cancer was included, similar to Paloma 1. And one group received palbacic lipolitrazole, and other group received placebo plus litrazole. And my primary endpoint was relapse with survival. This slide shows patient characteristics. These groups were well balanced according to their clinical and clinical and demographic characteristics. And I would like to, to stress that half of patients had visceral metastasis. And and those patients which uh, received hormones or, or not, so half to half. And if this treatment was performed, and the main results of this study, you see that the graphs that we have seen devoted to, to Paloma 1 result, so it was reproducible in Paloma 2 study. The upper graph that is uh, uh, that is uh, relapse-free survival and independent central evaluation that is lower the bottom graph, and uh, it shows a sufficient priority of the combination, including palbociclib. So there are different uh, different subgroups uh, were. Uh, compared uh, with respect to ethnicities, to previous treatment, uh, relapse-free period, pre previous chemotherapy, and so on. And in all, all these groups, the combination of palbociclib and litrazole had sufficient pri priorities, preponderances uh, as compared to placebo. Uh, what concerns toxicities, this study didn't show uh, any additional toxicities or unexpected results. And uh, as in case, as in, uh, in in case in study one, the more, most reported toxicity that was hematological one. Uh, Sixty-six percent to three thirds of the patients had neutropenia, grade three, four. And in advance, I would like to tell that the, the, the febrile neutropenia were rather rare, what concerns non hematological toxicities. Uh, without the digitalization, one should tell that uh, other non hematological uh, adverse effects were rather common, but, but they were not of third or fourth degree. And uh, a separate slate is devoted to adverse effects. You see that serious adverse effects was rather high in the group of palbociclib and uh, litrazole. Neutropenias were observed, but not, 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 not too common. Lethal lethal outcomes were comparable for both groups. That is a, such a rare case when the third phase study uh, uh, practically coincided with the data from, from the first study, from the Paloma 2. Here I have 
compared main characteristics of this study. The Paloma D1 and Paloma 2, they did this discrepant and with respect they had different numbers of patients. But the general conclusions are the same at the time till progression is doubling when using Ducitinib. And so, so, so the data coincide generally. Uh, another study, study the Paloma 3 study. There are two populations of so the patients. Uh, the study was double blinded. Third phase, phase 3, it included hormone dependent HER2 negative cancer. But in this case, combination, the combination had a full strand, but not a aromatase inhibitor. And it was, was performed uh, as a second line therapy. So this was the big sip, other arm that was uh, included full strand. The, the groups were again comparable with respect to their clinical characteristics and previous hormone therapy was uh, was approximately in 80 percent of the patients. Uh, over three tumor falsi that it was found in 40 percent of patients. The 60 percent had visceral metastasis. And the, the patients and the patients were they were excluded that have had previous hormone or chemotherapy. Or, or only one therapy was, was acceptable in order to be included into the study. And you see here results of this objective effects. Palpocyclin plus full restaurant. You see here that blue bars here are much higher. Uh, that did de 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 determining defining and defining uh, characteristics uh, registered. So this new combination, uh, plus Felvestram, it sufficiently exe exceeded efficiency of previous therapy. Uh, these are graphs of uh, anti relapse efficiency. And uh, this uh, the, the the graphs of uh, relapse free survival with palpocyclic leap. Mm, they also also showed its efficiency. According to the, all the parameters that were in the study, they they this the the, 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 the in, in 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 stage three they were like in stage or oh, excuse me studies one and two. What concerns toxicities? Uh, they, they didn't show any other types of toxicity. Neutropenia was found again. However, uh, this, this, uh, the, these episodes were no, non-complicated, and uh, it was no, it was rather rare. Another study, uh, Paloma. Another study. Excuse me. Same study. Paloma three. They included life quality assessment. Mm, I wouldn't uh, like to uh, exhaust you with the appropriate questionnaires, but the main results are as follows: that palpocyclin plus fulvestrand they showed a tendency for increased life quality. However, later, however, the life quality was decreased mainly due to progression in many patients uh, due to pain syndromes and so on. And uh, pain syndrome, it occurred later. Of course, it affected the emotional state of the patients. Uh, uh, if we, I would like to remember the study Bolero 2 that was reported uh, earlier, I have Compared the results of these studies, this uh, these studies they were they were placebo controlled. They were rather representative, and generally, according to main efficiency parameters, you know, we show hit time until progression. So we have obtained comparable results. 
with respect to uh, increased non-relapse survival. However, in study below row 2, a total of 19 percent of the patients who uh, have withdrawn the treatment due to toxicity of of this regimen and a quarter of patients did not complete their treatment. Meanwhile, in Paloma 3, despite this neutropenias occurring, only 4% interrupted their treatment. Hence, the conclusions from Paloma 1, uh, 2, and 3 are uh, evid are, is evidence that palbocycline, palbociclib is uh, allows to to increase lifespan of the patients, and with palbociclib, then this effect was shown in all three subgroup studies and. Yeah, and satisfactory survival, so satisfactory toxicity yeah, with only with only rare episodes of febrile neutropenia, and these results are reflected in guidelines, yeah, which are issued, updated yearly, annually. So sure. And last, uh, last NCCN version, I'll try to translate this footnote and nine, uh, a number of all four options for hormonal therapy according to these guidelines is much, is much more, much more numerous. Uh, two new, two quite new options appeared in this guideline, the palbociclin plus, palbociclin plus fulvestram. Also, two new regimens with palbociclib. So, the appropriate categories of patients which are, are, are mentioned here, also listed here. And, um, and, I, and this, this, it is also recommended that this, the patient should, should uh, be treated with such combinations um, as second and third line of treatment, as in the palbociclib pal pal litrazole, for example, and that is recommended for menopausal patients. Uh, with minimal head to expression, palbociclib plus falbestran, that is the, for progressing uh, cases with hormone therapy, and for example, the standard viral limus, there is a footnote that it, these are, they are recommended for the patient that correspond to the criteria that correspond to Bolero 2 inclusion criteria. Bolero 2. And what, what concerns ask a recommendation for endocrine therapy, breast cancer, uh, I would like repeat, it should be repeated. It is repeated in, in accordance to NCC recommendation. Uh, Aromatase inhibitors plus palbociclib, those patients with co which did not uh, receive treatment for metastatic disease, palbociclib, this is recommended for those patients that are pr progressing in the course of aromatase inhibitors therapy, as well as for example, standard viral limits, the same indications that, uh, already, that are, were already mentioned. I would like to uh, note another aspect with respect to toxicity. Here is a summary of adverse effects in this table, which are typical to those drugs. Tantamoxifen, aromatase inhibitors, and fulvestrand that we used for, for several years in our treatments. Uh, these toxicities are non-specific, mostly such neurovegetative effects. And what are the, the, the adverse effects with these new drugs? They, they have got some new quality. 
uh, efficiency in order to uh, in, to increase efficiency of this hormone therapy. Viral limus, you know that uh, it has rather serious adverse effects. Uh, these adverse effects are typical to chemotherapeutic drugs. The, the example of the stomatitis, hematological adverse effects, fever infections, palpable cyclip, cyclip, which uh, ex exhibits typical cytopenia, hands, hands the, when taking decision on hormone therapy, we must remember that these drugs, despite Despite their statistically significant efficiency, shown efficiency, they they exhibit a certain toxicity profile, and there we should consider this effect when choosing the options for hormone therapy and combined drug therapy. Uh, just as to, to take about pharmacoeconomic efficiency of this. It met, um, that uh, that was uh, mentioned in previous reports. I guess, however, that we shall uh, that we shall be uh, shall have it to use these drugs. Thank you for attention. Uh, one question, if there are any questions.